What's up y'all? It's Justin here again and I am finally coming at you with my first gear video. Now before I get started I do want to apologize for any background noise you may hear. Um, there is a major freeway that runs directly behind my house so it does get kind of noisy. Um, yeah, I didn't really feel like going anywhere else to record this video so hey today we're just gonna have to roll with it. Now I know this video is probably well overdue at this point. Um, over the last several months, I've gotten so many requests to sit down and make a video talking about the gear that I'll be taking out on the AT next year. Uh, I guess I've really just been trying to figure out how exactly I want to do that. Uh, I wasn't sure if laying out all of my gear in one video would be super helpful for everyone, uh, especially those who are maybe just taking an interest in hiking and backpacking and aren't really sure where to begin. Uh, I personally know how overwhelming it can be just seeing a whole bunch of gear just thrown at you and not really knowing where to start. So what I've decided to do is break my videos up into sections and in each section I'll just be going over a few specific items at a time. So uh, this is the first section and I'll be talking about the big three. So for those who maybe don't know, the big three includes your pack, your shelter, and your sleep system. And out of your entire gear setup, these are the items that you want to make sure that you are absolutely in love with because these can definitely make or break your hike. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over my big three. Um, so I'll talk about some specs, uh, where I got everything from, and roughly how much I paid for everything. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the pack that I'm showing today is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear 2400 Wind Rider. But funny enough, this actually isn't the pack that I'm planning to use on the AT. Uh, things are pretty much still in the works on that front, but if all goes according to plan, I'll soon have a custom pack from a really cool small gear company who's on their way to making some serious waves in the hiking community. But more on that another day. For the sake of offering something comparable, let's just talk about the Wind Rider. So this pack currently retails at $320, which is a little on the pricey side in my opinion. However, thanks to my buddy Graham over at Field Mag, I was able to get this one for free in exchange for some content. Um, I put together a video of our trip to the Adirondacks in upstate New York over the summer, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Now this pack has an internal capacity of 40 liters with an additional 9.8 liters of storage space in the outside pockets. A few weeks ago, I actually took this pack out on a shakedown hike, if y'all remember my Loyal Sock Trail videos, and I really felt like it served its purpose. Um, it carried really well, and even with five days of food, I still had some extra room on the inside to play around with, so I was definitely pleased with that. To give myself easy access to my water bottle and some snacks, I added the Z-Packs water bottle sleeve and storage pouch to the front straps. And lastly, to keep my most important gear items dry, I will line the inside of the pack with the Z-Packs pack liner. Moving on to my tent, I decided to go with the Z-Packs duplex. And let me tell you, at a $700 price tag, this was an investment but overall, I think it's worth it. Rather than going with the standard blue or olive drab color, which would have been a little cheaper, I figured I might get more value out of the spruce green option, which is just slightly heavier, but also a little more durable. Honestly, who can really tell the difference between 19 versus 21 ounces? Uh, I know I can. As far as setup goes, obviously I need my two trekking poles, but the duplex also requires a minimum of six stakes, but to get a little extra headroom on the inside, I like to use eight personally. For the four corners, I use the MSR Groundhog Minis, which are in red. And then to stake out the roof, I like to use the more heavy duty Z-Pax Supersonics, which are the blue. Um, to pull out the sides a little more, I just grabbed a couple of these standard stakes that came with my Big Agnes Tiger Wall tent. Now the biggest draw for me when it came to this tent is the fact that I can use my trekking poles to set it up rather than having to carry extra tent poles which not only adds weight but also takes up more storage space in my pack. I also don't have to worry about a separate rain fly since this tent is made with the highly water resistant DCF material. 
This makes setting it up really quick and easy because I don't have to worry about so many extra parts. And lastly, I used to carry a ground sheet to lay under my old Big Agnes tent, but again, because the material is so durable, I don't really feel like I need one for this tent. As long as I'm handling it with care and being really choosy about where I set it up, I don't think I'll really run into many problems. Last but not least, we've got my sleep system, beginning with my Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20 Degree Down Quilt. Now, as someone who tosses and turns in my sleep, I felt that the transition from my mummy style sleeping bag to a quilt was necessary, as it just allows more freedom to move around until I find the most comfortable position. I've also just fallen in love with Enlightened Equipment's products. They offer so many options for customization, which allows you to get exactly what you're looking for. So my quilt came in at a cost of around $335, but for the sake of staying warm at night, I think it's worth investing more into your sleep setup. And I can't forget to mention how light it is at just 19 ounces. With a 20 degree rating, this quilt is designed to allow me to sleep fairly comfortably in temperatures as low as 20 degrees. I put that to the test on my most recent shakedown hike in Dolly Sides, West Virginia, where temperatures reached as low as 23 degrees. And I have to say, as long as I was under my quilt, I was pretty warm, though I did have pretty much all my layers on as well. On warmer nights, I can easily open up the footbox completely and throw the quilt over me as a blanket, which I absolutely love. Choosing the right sleeping pad adds more warmth as well, as it creates an extra barrier between you and the cold ground. In my setup, I'll be pairing the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite with the Gossamer Gear 1 8 inch Thin Light Foam Pad. I quickly found that throwing a foam pad into my setup was definitely a game changer. During the day, I can fold it up and use it as a sit pad while I eat lunch or rest for a little bit. And at night, I can lay it under my inflatable pad to prevent any holes. As far as the pillow goes, I'm also going the inflatable route with the Sea to Summit Eros Ultra Light Pillow. A little trick I picked up is to pull a buff over it to act as a pillowcase, which adds a bit of extra comfort. All right, so there you have my big three. Um, this is gonna conclude this video, but be sure to stay tuned because I will be making updates over the next couple of months as I swap some things out. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. I hope this is helpful to at least one of you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Take care.